interviewing and negotiating. For most of us, the work we've done along the way, updating our resumes, reviewing the job description, uh, has gone a long way in preparing us for the interview. But it never hurts to go over this material again um, in preparation for the interview. So research the company, research the job and the job description, um, looking for things that may come up in the interview. Uh, ultimately, the best thing we can do is practice. Uh, the only thing that is going to make us go into that interview feeling confident and enthusiastic is to feel like we know the material and have practice. For many of you, centers uh, near you, your local Iowa Work Centers, will frequently offer mock interviews, which is another good uh, tactic to use in preparation for your interview. If you're potentially doing anything wrong or, or saying things that could be a red flag to an employer, you would rather have that pointed out by the career planners at the centers than you would learning it the hard way in an interview. What to bring to the interview. Um, some of the essentials would be notebook, pen, examples of your work, IDs and other forms of identification that they may require. I would at least bring three copies of your resume. You've already submitted it and uploaded it to the application, but you never know if additional people are going to be in the interview, and it's nice for them to have a paper copy. Again, references is something that we frequently already entered in the online application, but it's nice to bring a couple extra copies of that, along with any letters of recommendation or other documents you think you might need, like transcripts or things like that. How to dress for the interview. There is no simple answer for how to dress for an interview uh, because sometimes it's appropriate to wear a suit and sometimes it would be absolutely unnecessary to wear a suit. As a general rule, we would say dress one step above what they likely wear day to day on the job. Um, we always want to go in being clean and professional uh, and especially in this day and age free of strong smells. Um, although makeup is okay. We would suggest light makeup and a clean shaven appearance, um, touching up on fingernail polish and, and things like that. Um, tattoos are, are certainly more acceptable today than, than they were, say, 10 to 15 years ago, um, but probably a recommended strategy would still be to cover that tattoo up if possible for the interview uh, and then see what the company's policy is on a day-to-day -day basis. And the same would go for or piercings. Um, and again, some of the spicy um, and, and different kinds of foods that we might eat going in um, to an interview are going to be the same policy that we used on, on staying free of, of strong cologne um, spells. So probably not a good idea um, right before we go into the interview. Um, so when does the interview really start? Um, and the next question kind of alludes to that, which is what percentage of executives consider the advice of their administrative assistants to be important when making hiring decisions? I think we all know that this is something that is probably going to be considered, but uh, maybe 90% of them is a slightly higher percentage than, than you would have thought. A lot of times they'll say that interview starts really the moment you hit the parking lot. Um, and so how you treat everyone along the way uh, is a factor that could be considered. Um, even before you get to the interview, um, phone etiquette. So what does your voicemail sound like? Um, is your voicemail set up? Are you checking your messages? Are they getting a message that says, I'm sorry, we can't leave a message because um, the voicemail box is full. So just be sure that you're presenting and rep presenting yourself on that voicemail um, as professionally as you're going to be in person. Uh, Google yourself. You talk to a lot of hiring managers and they'll say that's one of the first things that they might do um, in, in readying themselves for an interview with the candidate is to take a look on Google or social media. Um, we're not saying that you shouldn't have social media, but you certainly want to know what your social media um, is representing to companies. They care about their brand and they want to know that you care about your brand too. Um, if this is something that you're not sure about, many of the Iowa Work Centers will offer a digital literacy or a digital footprints class where you could come in and learn a little bit more about how to set your privacy settings. Uh, and some even offer a LinkedIn lab um, where you could have that, that 
strategies to develop a really strong LinkedIn profile, which is a very positive social media um, site that employers are going to look to. Some other tips is go to the interview alone. Um, certainly don't bring your kids in. If you have somebody that's come along with you, uh, don't bring them into the interview. We want to show up early, but not too early. And about 10 minutes is probably the recommended time. You get there too early and we might be interrupting them and they're not quite ready for us. Um, you don't give yourself enough time and you might find yourself feeling a little rushed or, or running late. Um, and then again, being as friendly as we can when we're checking in with the staff and offering um, a good firm handshake to those that we meet along the way. Body language, uh, you know, you talk to a lot of experts and they'll say um, body language and some of the nonverbal cues that we give off are going to be perhaps more important to employers even than, than what we might say in the interview. Um, and so some of the statistics you see here, 62% of them um, are turned off by lack of eye contact, 38% by a lack of a smile, um, fidgeting too much, bad posture, make the list, 26% by too weak of a handshake. Um, the next one is kind of tough for a lot of us because we might just feel more comfortable sometimes with our arms crossed across our chest. Uh, but that can send a different message than, than what we're trying to send. Um, and lastly, playing with our hair or touching our face. Remember that the hiring manager is not your friend. Um, you, you can have a friendly conversation uh, in an interview, but we have to remember who we're talking to um, and that we want to keep our answers about work in our professional life, not about our personal life. Uh, different types of interviews that we might go into, um, and some of these are pretty standard, um, the, the one, one candidate, one interviewer. Um, you may have multiple interviews with the same um, company, just meeting with different interviewers each time. You may have one candidate um, and many interviewers or many candidates and one interviewer. Uh, and then a lot of companies are going to the screening a lot, and a lot of these interviews can be done over the phone where you might be called um, just to see are you still looking for the job and doing a little bit to test your fit and engagement. I'm also seeing a lot of salary discussions happening in some of these screening calls just to make sure that the candidate is aware of the, the salary and, and accepts it. Uh, so what are they looking for? They say, even though they may ask you a lot of questions in the interview, that typically most of these questions are all geared back to about four different things. So do you have the skills for the job? And, and this is really, can you do the job, um, the day-to-day -day activities that are required in the job description? Um, the next two kind of have to do with how well are you going to fit in? How well are you going to fit in with the team that you're going to be working with? How well are you going to fit in with me if I'm your supervisor? Um, and lastly, are you going to stay or are you just looking for a job right now and we'll take anything in three months down the road? I'm going to be looking for another candidate to fill this position. Um, so those are some of the things that the interviewer is, is considering, but I really want to encourage folks to ask some of these questions of themselves when they're in there. Um, as you learn more about the job when you're in there for the interview, to ask yourself, does this feel like something that you have the skills to do? Does this feel like something that you're going to be good at? Um, do you feel like you would work well with that hiring manager or the supervisor? Um, if you've learned a little bit about the team, do you think it is a culture that you're going to fit into and want to stay? So just as much as they might be interviewing us, we're going to encourage candidates to really do a little bit of interviewing and assessing on their own while they're in there. So the STAR method. So we're going to probably reference the STAR method a couple times throughout the rest of this presentation. Um, and the STAR method is, is essentially a format um, for your answers. Um, and it starts with the situation or the task, then goes into the action and the result. So this is how we're going to formulate our answers. Um, and this will be a little bit easier to talk about when we have some, some examples. Now, you may have some companies that will specifically ask you to answer questions in the STAR, or sometimes you'll just hear SAR, Situation Action Result Format. 
Um, what you want to remember about the STAR method is that you're going to spend the least amount of time talking about the situation or the task and the most amount of time talking about what you did about it, the action, um, and why there was a positive result at the end. So what did I learn? Why am I better because of uh, that situation that happened? And again, we'll talk a little bit more about the situation, action, result um, in some later examples. Um, one of the things I liked best about utilizing the STAR method is that it helps us be a little bit more succinct in our answers. So if you happen to be one of those people that maybe tends to ramble on a little bit, this is going to help you sort of stay on task to answer your questions. Um, and because the last thing we're going to talk about is the result, it, it allows us to always answer an interview question positively. Um, so that result should always be something positive. What I learned, why I'm better because of that situation. Um, even if the question that they initially ask is something that could be a little bit more negative, like tell me about a time that you had conflict with a coworker, or talk to me about a weakness. We can always spin those positively by talking about our action and the result. Um, prove it stories. So these are some things that we might utilize um, in an interview to not just say, but what we did not just to say what we did, but how well we did it. Um, so I am a I'm a dependable person because I only missed um, two days in the five years of my employment. I am reliable because my manager made me responsible for opening and closing the store while he was gone. I am adaptable because I rotated departments at my previous job to learn variety of machines and tools relevant to each department. I am an honest employee. For example, I was responsible for handling 75 customer transactions ranging from one to $5,000 and receipts always balanced against daily sales. And you can see that these are kind of set up in that situation action result format as well. What are some questions that I may be asked? Uh, so there is no general set of outline for, for questions that a company is going to ask you. You can do a little bit of research online, um, sometimes Glassdoor, sometimes LinkedIn, places like that. We can find out what some of the commonly asked questions are by company. Uh, but the best you can really do um, is have done a, a pretty comprehensive self-assessment of your skill set and what this job is and that you're just be prepared to talk about um, to talk about those strengths along with the, with the most commonly asked question. Um, for a long time now that the most commonly asked question and frequently the first question that you might be asked in an interview is tell me about yourself. Um, and referencing back to the hiring manager not being your friend, uh, this can be a tough one. It, it often comes at the very beginning of the interview after you've done your introductions. And then they say, tell me about yourself. And, and a lot of candidates will feel like um, they want to know about me personally. Um, and this is not a time to talk about yourself personally. This is time to talk about yourself as a professional. Um, so we really want to gear the answer to the tell me about yourself question uh, specifically to the position that we're applying for. We're not going to tell them where we're from. We're not going to tell them how many kids we have. We're going to talk to them about ourselves as a professional. And here are some examples. I, over, I have over three years solid work experience and work well in a team environment. My experience includes safely unloading trucks and examining the merchandise visually for damages with three other coworkers. I'm responsible. I am a responsible employee during my three years working directly with money. My drawer was always balanced. I am a dependable person in the last three years. I have missed only one day due to illness. I'm able to multitask in a fast-paced environment efficiently. I am trainable and adaptable. For example, I was easily taught on operating equipment such as grills and fryers without any accidents, in addition to learning janitorial duties, running the drive through and operating the cash register. So those are just some examples and you'll have to tailor your own tell me about yourself question. When it comes to questions about what are your strengths and weaknesses, this is another one that we're going to really try to tailor to the prospective employer, even more specifically to the job 
um, that we're applying for. These are not answers that we should have to think about. Um, again, because these are some of the most commonly asked questions, they're going to assume that I've already considered what my strengths are in relation to this job. Um, in addition to any weaknesses that I might have in relation to this job, um, this is another perfect time, um, that weakness question, to utilize that uh, STAR method or the situation action result. So if I am going to bring up a, a weakness or, or something that I think I need to, to learn or grow on, um, I am going to move into the action. What have I done about that weakness so far? Um, and what has the result been? What, how have I shown improvement already? Uh, so again, strengths and weaknesses are questions that we should already have prepared and I should be able to, to move right in to answering those without having to consider it too long in the interview. Um, and again, I'm going to try to utilize that STAR method um, to talk about what I've done about my weaknesses and what positive result I've had. What do you know about our company? So in some version um, or some form, this question is frequently going to be asked fairly early on in the interview. 40% uh, of candidates cannot answer this question. So do your research so that you can be confident and ready. Uh, obviously, we're going to spend some time on the company's website looking at their mission, their values. Um, any, any information I can possibly gather that might be um, good information to, to try to share while I'm in that interview. Um, and again, I should be learning about this company because I'm going to, for my own self, be considering how well am I going to fit into this company's culture, this company's values, um, how well um, does my mission match their mission. So this is something I should, for my own self, be considering along the way, um, and then also just be aware that it's, it's frequently a question that's asked early on in an interview. So work culture versus work environment. And so you can see here on the slide, culture has to do with beliefs, thought processes, attitudes. Um, environment is the physical location. So how far am I driving to work? Am I working inside? Am I working outside? Um, am I teleworking? Yeah, so these are all things that I might um, consider when I'm preparing for that interview. Have you ever worked with someone you didn't like? Now, the question may not um, be phrased exactly like this. And, and what this question is trying to get to um, is, uh, would you ever talk negatively about someone that you used to work with, a former supervisor, a former coworker, a former employer? Um, these kinds of things can be red flags to future employers who are going to think if you talked bad about them, all you'll do is talk bad about me. Now, obviously, we don't want to lie in an interview, but we do have a right to privacy and we don't have to say everything out loud. Um, so we want to try to stay positive. We want to give the least possible information um, that we need to about situations. And again, focus here um, on that situation action results. So um, if there if there was something, have you done anything about it? And has there been any positive result because of that? What are your wage requirements? Um, so what we would recommend in an ideal situation is that we don't talk about salary until we are being offered the job. That is when we have the most power to negotiate is once they have identified me as the candidate they'd like for the position. Uh, now, unfortunately, in this day and age, uh, very seldom do, do you have the opportunity to not talk about salary until you're being offered the job. I'm encountering a lot of online applications these days uh, that are asking those questions right when I'm applying. So how much did I make um, at my last job when I started? How much did I make at my last job when I left? Um, how much am I thinking that I want to make at, at this job? So frequently I've already had to answer that question. Um, and again, we're going to do our research. So there's a lot of websites out there. One of them you see referenced here on this uh, website is futureadyiowa.gov. Um, but there's a lot of websites out there. There's a Career One Stop. There's ONET Online. Um, what you want to look for is to just make sure um, that you're getting information that's from the Department of Labor or a partner of the American Job Center, um, just so that you know that, that the wages and, and salary information that you're looking at looking at are accurate. Uh, another thing I really want to caution people to consider 
when they're researching salary is make sure that you're getting salary information specific to the area where you are. And so Future Ready Iowa, Career One Stop, some of these websites are going to have you put in your location. Um, because different places in Iowa might require you to, to request a different salary. Um, you may go to some websites and what they're giving you is a national average um, for wage information. And what you want to know is what are other people in my area with a similar level of education and experience, what are they typically making? And that's going to give me a good sort of like baseline to use in that interview if I'm asked what I think I should make um, in a specific a specific position. Um, again, we, we're, we're always going to encourage people to try to negotiate a better salary for themselves. Uh, what we typically tell people is the answer is always no if I don't ask. Um, now, if I am going to talk about salary, I want to have done my research first. So um, if they offer me a number and I think I that other people in my area with my experience in education are making a little more, I may try to negotiate a better salary for myself. Um, I know people can be sometimes nervous about doing this, but you're not going to encounter employers who are going to pull back a job offer because you try to negotiate a better salary for themselves. Um, if you if they can't meet you um, at that salary range, perhaps they'll meet you somewhere in between, um, but you don't know uh, until you ask. So we certainly do encourage people at the time of offer to try to negotiate that better salary. Frequently, we're going to be asked why we left our last position. Um, we need to be prepared to talk about this. This is another time where one of those mock interviews would really come in handy um, so that we feel like we know what we're going to say and we're prepared and confident about our answers. A lot of times when folks go into interviews and, and there's something they don't want to talk about, um, a lot of times they'll just hope that they don't get asked that question um, and, and hope Hoping that you don't get asked that question is not going to make that question any easier to answer when you get in there. Um, so again, we're going to try not to blame that former employer. Um, we're going to try to remain positive as we explain, um, explain the situation as briefly possible. Um, and then again, if I do have to be, if I do have to talk about being let go from a job, what I'm going to do is state the situation briefly and then quickly move into what did I do about that. So what what um, steps have I taken to try to learn a little bit about that situation to make sure that it doesn't happen again um, so that I don't get into a job that's not a good fit for my skill set. Um, we want to be honest um, when we talk about this. Um, employers are not just going to say, well, we don't hire anybody that's ever been let go from their last position. If they have that kind of a standard or policy, they'd never be able to, to fill positions. Employers are aware that sometimes things don't work out for a job and that just because you were let go from that position doesn't mean that you can't come and work for me and still be a productive and positive employee. Um, what they're looking for, though, is what did you learn? from that transition? What did you learn from being let go? And why are you so sure that you're going to be more successful when you work for me? There are such a thing as illegal questions or questions that employers are not supposed to ask you in an interview. And some of those topics you can see here on the screen are about my health status, my marital status, if I have children, um, gender, age, religion, etc. Um, now, Many times when you're going to go into interviews, you're going to see that the interviewers probably have a typed up set of interview questions. And that really is to protect them from asking something uh, that they're not supposed to be asking. It is possible that you'll have somebody in an interview, a panel interview, that maybe doesn't do these interviews all the time and doesn't know they can't ask about your children. And so sometimes questions may come up. Um, and and you're going to have to handle them and decide whether you want to just answer the question um, or whether you maybe want to pose the question that they have listed here is, can you give me an idea um, of how the specific functions included at the job would require you uh, 
um, to need this information. We want to try to do this. We want to assume best intentions, um, assume that maybe this, this question just slipped out or that they weren't aware that they couldn't ask me. Um, and, and I'm just going to try to to come around to find out uh, what it is about this job that makes them think that they might need to know that information. All right. So what questions are hard for you? We all have a question that we're dreading. We all have a question um, that we don't want to answer. Again, you should consider what those questions are that you think you might struggle with. And I would suggest that we spend even more time practicing our answers for those questions. Um, and again, this is just another time that I might give a, a plug um, for the mock interviews. There simply is no, no way to replace practice. You know, the only way we get better at things is by practicing. So if you have a question that you're dreading, um, sometimes employers can pick up on that. If you're just going along answering questions and it's going pretty smoothly, um, and then they ask you a question and you break out in a sweat and hives and and you're, you're obviously having a, a more difficult time answering that question, that too can send up some red flags for them. So we want to be as prepared to answer those, those tough questions like, why did I leave my last job? Why has there been a gap in my employment? Is there something on my background that might come up? You know, those, if those are questions I'm dreading, those are questions I might spend the most time preparing for. Finally, we're going to ask some questions. So yes, they're going to ask us questions during the interview, but this is also our opportunity to try to learn a little bit more about that company, about the job, and to show that we're interested. Um, so what is a typical day like in this position? You know, so walk me through um, what this position, what this person might do day to day. How would you describe your ideal candidate? Um, you know, sometimes I've heard people ask, what did you like about the last person that did this job? Um, when, um, how will my performance be measured? If you get online and, and Google it, you're going to find um, a lot of examples of questions that you could ask at an interview. Um, I would typically say that that sometimes two to three, maybe three or four questions are going to be reasonable, um, but I would probably have more questions than that printed out. I may have as many as eight to ten questions printed out because I don't know throughout the course of the interview if they aren't going to answer some of those questions. Um, and then maybe most importantly is when can I expect to hear someone um, about a decision, you know, or when do they expect to be making a decision about this job? You know, am I the last candidate being in? interviewed? Am I the first candidate being interviewed? Sometimes we like to know those things so I can have a reasonable expectations of when I might be hearing from someone. I'm going to close the conversation, verbally thank and reaffirm my interest in this position. I may ask for business cards from, from everyone who's in the room. I'm going to send a simple thank you to the interviewer or interviewers. Now, in this day and age. Again, this says thank you note. Uh, typically, my thank yous are going to go via email. Now, I may get a feel in that interview um, for what the interviewer may prefer. Are they someone that res may respond better to, to a handwritten thank you note than I suppose is possible? I may still do something like that. But typically, they have, re they have corresponded with me mostly in email, so I'm going to respond in email with my Thank you. The other nice thing about the email is it can get to them immediately. Uh, again, we don't necessarily know when they're going to be making their decision. If my card that I've mailed doesn't get there until three days later, that might not do me any good. Um, I think the next one is, is the hardest, is making that follow-up call because we want to know. We want them to know we're interested, um, and so we tend to want to follow up with employers maybe a little bit more than they want us to follow up with them. Um, so I would say one phone call is acceptable. Um, so I'd maybe wait that, that four or five days, and then I'm going to make a follow-up call. Again, just kind of letting, um, letting them know I'm interested, that I enjoyed talking with them at the interview, if there's anything else that's come up that, that I think that they need to know. Uh, but I am going to make just that one call. Um, and we have to remember that although it's important to us, we're only one of the many people that probably applied for this job. And you can imagine how overwhelming it might be for, for that employer to, to have to respond to all of those calls. And that concludes our presentation. Um, 
again, just some things you might want to think about is, uh, again, coming into the center for, for a mock interview. Some of our centers offer job clubs, which are groups of job seeking individuals who, who get together, um, meet and greets, um, whether that be in the community or, or in the center, um, attending one of our hiring events, uh, which are typically um, held at our centers. And it's an employer that is um, looking to hire who sets up um, either once or, or maybe a couple of times a week in one of the Iowa Works locations. Um, how these hiring events happen are a little bit different depending on employers. So some employers may simply be there just to um, answer questions, to help you do the application, to help you learn a little bit more about the position. Sometimes um, employers will come in and will do the question and answer and will also do some on the spot interviews. So if you're going to attend one of those hiring events, it's probably best to come in prepared as if you may be potentially interviewed. Um, and again, check out your, your local center's workshop calendar uh, for a list of other workshops that might be pertinent um, to helping you with your job search. And that concludes our workshop. And thank you for attending.